Hi. Now, I've got an example here based on the equation of a circle. I've got a circle, it has an equation x minus 5 all squared plus y plus 2 all squared equals 25. And in part 1, you've got to find the coordinates of the centre C and the length of the diameter. And in the second part, find the equation of the line which passes through C and the point P at 7, 2. And finally, in part 3, calculate the length of CP and hence determine whether P lies inside or outside the circle. So if you'd like to try this and haven't done so already, I'll give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you can see the work solution or fast forward through it just to check the answers. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Well, just as a reminder about the equation of a circle, the equation of a circle, radius r, center x1, y1, is given by x minus x1 all squared plus y minus y1 all squared equals r squared. And you should be familiar with this. If not, there's plenty of tutorials on my website on this. So with part one then, OK, let's just uh, start then with part one. That center is going to be at 5 minus 2. When you compare this to this particular format that we've got here, you should be able to see that x1 is 5 and y1 is minus 2. So the center then, let's just put that in, the center C has coordinates 5 minus 2. Now we've got to go on to work out the length of the diameter. So first of all, we've just got to get the radius and we can see that r squared, the radius squared, is the number on the end here. So we've got that therefore the radius, we know the radius squared is equal to 25. So the radius must be equal to the square root of 25. And it won't be plus or minus because we're looking at a positive length here. So that's going to be 5. And so therefore, the diameter has got to be twice that, so diameter must equal 10. OK, so that's part one. Now, in part two, we've got to go on and find the equation of the line which passes through our centre point C and the point P72. Now, whenever I'm doing questions based on coordinate geometry, I always like to just draw a sketch, and this is no exception. So, uh, I'll just have my axes here, x and y, and we've got our point C with coordinates 5 minus 2. So, we've got 5 across, 2 down. Let's just say that that's the point C with coordinates 5 minus 2. And we've got our point P with coordinates 7, 2, so 7 across, 2 up, so something like that. It's not drawn to scale, but uh, it will just give us some idea of what's going on. So we've got to find the equation of this line then going through C and P. So if we just mark it on, say, something like this, OK? Now, the equation of a line is going to have the form, let's say, y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. I prefer to use this form than y equals mx plus c, because if we use y equals mx plus c, we're going to have to find out where the line crosses the y-axis. And uh, I don't want to get involved with that. y1, x1, or x1, y1 is a point on the line. I can use either p or c, and m is the gradient. The problem is, I don't know what the gradient is at this stage. So that's where we're going to go, first of all. Get that gradient m. So the gradient m is going to equal the difference in the y-coordinates. So it's going to be 2 minus minus 2. 2 minus minus 2. And that is divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. 7 minus 5. And this comes out at 4 
divided by 2, 4 over 2 is 2. And I've got a positive gradient and having a sketch here at least allows me to see that it would be a positive gradient. Okay, so it does act as a valuable check. Now I'm in a position then to get the equation of the line. So we'll just come down here and we'll put in that therefore the equation okay, of the line and what is it going to be? Well using that form we've got y minus y1. Now I can either choose 2 or minus 2 but as soon as I choose my y1 value I've got to use the corresponding x1 value. But it doesn't matter whether I use p or whether I use c. I'll use p, okay? You could check it out by using c. You should find you get exactly the same answer at the end. So it'll be y minus 2 equals m, the gradient, which we've just seen is 2, multiplied by x minus x1, and that would be the 7. And if we expand this, you've got y minus 2 equals 2x minus 14. And you could make y the subject. They don't tell us what form to uh, give the answer in. It's up to you. OK, so y equals 2x. And we can add 2 to both sides. And we've got minus 14, add 2. So that's going to be minus 12. And again, having a sketch like this allows us to see that this value where it would intersect the y-axis when x is 0 is at minus 12. So it looks a good answer, OK? So uh, there we go. That's the equation of the line. y equals 2x minus 12 then. Now in the part 3, what we've got to do is calculate the length of c to p and hence determine whether p lies inside or outside the circle. So to do this, we'll first of all calculate the length CP and we can do this by using Pythagoras' theorem. CP will be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the difference between the x values plus the difference in the y values. Essentially, what we have got here, I can put it in for you, is that we've just got to imagine our triangle in here. Using Pythagoras' theorem is that this side squared plus this side squared equals the distance CP squared. So CP will be equal then to the square root of the difference between the x coordinates, all squared. So that's going to be 7 minus 5. 7 minus 5, all squared plus the difference in the y-coordinates. That's this distance, all squared. That would be 2 minus minus 2. 2 minus minus 2, all squared. OK? Now if you work this out, you've got 4 here plus 16. That's 20, the root of 20. OK? Square root of 20. Now, I could break this down actually. Square root of 20 is made up of 4 times 5. So if I square root 4, that's 2. And that just leaves me with 2 multiplied by root 5. But does P lie inside or outside of the circle where C is the center of the circle? Well, we've already seen that the radius of the circle was 5. Or given by the square root of 25. And here we've got the square root of 20, which is clearly less than root of 25. So therefore, P must lie inside the circle that is surrounding C as the centre. OK, so we'll just put here that since CP okay, is less than Five, the square root of 25, then P lies inside the circle. Okay, we'll just say inside circle. And there you go. Okay.